Hey, I'm Stacy, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be troubleshooting some timing issues. In my last video, I implemented my pause and window. And in that video, I had a couple of timing issues that I knew needed to be resolved. I'm going to be looking at those timing issues and resolving them today. The pause and window itself, you don't really have to worry about. So there's my schematic and I'm going to open the timing summary, report timing summary. And so the worst case slack, as we can see, is eight nanoseconds. If we remember from the timing video, the path length is from run register to the next. This path went eight nanoseconds over what was expected. It must be less than 10 nanoseconds. And in this case, it was 18 nanoseconds instead of 10. If we look at the worst case path, path number one is always going to be the worst case. We can see that it's a long path through all of the stuff in the FPGA. So it's not surprising that it failed. If I double click on it, it will show me what's in the path. And what we can see here is that these are the primitives that the signal is going through. There are my multipliers for creating B and B squared and B cubed. That's what these DSP. And then there's also some carries for my adding that I do after that. So the left hand column is how long each block took. And then the net delay is how long the net took, which is the wire from the one block to the next is the wire and that also has a specific delay. And so we can see that this multiplies four nanoseconds and that multiplies almost four nanoseconds. So that those multiplies together are eight nanoseconds. And that's why I recommend that we do one clock cycle per multiply because the multipliers can take up quite a bit of time. So in this case, I could get two multiplies in in theory, before the end of the clock cycle. And so this is why it's generally good practice to put registers in between. But adding in registers can have knock-on effect to the behavior of the subsequent code. And when I add in registers, I'm going to be delaying those signals by one clock cycle. And so I'm going to have to compensate for that. I'm going to go in and add some registers into my code now. This is what it looks like before. Basically, my code has two multiplies in it. This is my first multiply where I multiply b by itself to get b squared. And this is the second multiply where I multiply b squared by b to get b cubed. So after this line of code, I'm going to be adding in a clocked always block. This always block basically adds into the code a register. Remember, I mentioned that the timing tool will measure from one register to the next register. I'm adding in a register to break up this one long clock cycle into smaller ones. So I'm just going to add in an always block b underscore z. So I've created my b squared underscore z signal and I'm going to drive it by all zeros. This apostrophe zero just means fill it up with zeros. And then if I'm out of reset, then I'm going to be driving it by uh, itself. Um, and then this way I can create a delayed version of B squared that I can use in my B cubed calculation. So here I can go into my B cubed calculation and I can use B underscore Z. I'm also going to add in a valid. Okay, so in this code, I have added in some valids. So now every signal has a valid. My rule of thumb with the valids is that it's signal name underscore valid. And then it follows through. If the data is driven by another data signal, then the valid for that will be driven by that signal's corresponding valid signal. So they follow together in pairs. I'm going to run the simulation. We can see now that my Z valid is now one clock cycle later from my original valid. So here is B2 valid and it's valid from that point. And the Z underscore valid, which is the registered version, is valid from that point. And you can see that the data also follows with that. And so in order to calculate B3 or B cubed, I have to do B squared times B. But now my B squared and my B are out of sync with each other because the B signal, which is that guy, st starts being valid at that point. But now I've delayed B squared by one clock cycle in order to ease the timing. And that's shifted it along by one clock cycle. So when I implement my register, if I have a 
following stage in the pipeline and I have to register one signal and everything needs to stay in sync, I have to register all of the signals that are relevant for that stage of the pipeline in order to keep everything in sync. So for this B cubed calculation, I'm using B squared and B. So both B squared and B need to stay in sync with each other in order to be multiplied together to get the right result. So this B signal also needs to be delayed. So I need to make, create a delayed version of B as well in order to correctly multiply these two signals together. So I'm going to create a delayed version of B. So it's a matter of style whether you create the delayed version of signals with the signal itself. So I create the delayed version of B with B. Or other people just like to lump all their delayed signals, all their registers at the bottom of the file somewhere. So it just depends on personal preference where you want to put these registers. I'm going to put this delayed B with my B squared calculation. So I'm going to have one register block that calculates all my Z versions of signals. I just find that that allows me to not clutter up the main algorithm part of the code. So now I have delayed B and B squared because both B and B squared are used in the calculation of B cubed. And so if I delay one of them, I have to delay both of them otherwise they'll get out of sync with each other. So I'm going to rerun my simulation. So now we can see here I've delayed b with b squared. bz valid is there, a b squared valid is there. So those two valids are now both lining up with the same clock cycle. And that means that now when I perform my b cubed calculation I'm using the right signals that are line up with each other in order to do the multiply. So now that I've added in my registers, I'm going to rerun my timing report to see what it looks like now. Okay, so let's report timing summary round two. And now that we've added in our registers, I actually don't even know if this is going to work. Oh, it still failed. <laughs> so I've added in registers, but not enough registers, it seems. Let's take a look at where we are now. Okay, so even though I have added in one register for the one multiply. The second multiply is still unregistered. So we can see here my B cubed multiply signals aren't registered. So after the B cubed, after the multiply, I carry on doing other stuff. And we can see in the timing report that after this B cubed, so this is the B cubed output, I go on to scale and add the numbers. And I need to break that up again so that there's a register between my multiply and the rest of the stuff that I do. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to register B3 over here. And so now the output has been registers as well. I had to add in a couple of more registers in order to keep everything synced up. And that's quite important. If you need to add in registers for timing purposes, you need to make sure that you're compensating by delaying other signals. So I've had to add in other signals as well in order to delay everything to sync up for my parsing window. Now that the synthesis is complete, I'm going to open the synthesized design, reload. There we go. Now it fits. Uh, so let's just open the schematic. And what we can see now is if we look at the worst case slack, now it's not negative anymore. Now the worst case slack is 0.3 nanoseconds. So that means that there was still 0.3 nanoseconds left over of the clock cycle through all the combinatorial logic. And that's it. And now my design meets timing. Over time with experience, you will get better at having an intuition for how much combinatorial logic you can put into one clock cycle. And my general rule of thumb is after every multiply you should register or every multiply should be registered. Thanks for watching my video and I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time. Bye! I was so excited about packages that I didn't have coffee this afternoon and I'm behind with work. And I'm, I'm blabbing because synthesis is still burning. I hope this means timing.